YouTube clapperboard video, scene one, take one. Hello, welcome to the workshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own clapperboard. If you're into making movies like myself, this is an essential part of your equipment. I've seen a lot of these made on YouTube where people put masking tape over here and paint them two different colours, white and black. But we're in a wood workshop here, so I'm going to actually make this using two different types of wood to give me this distinct chevron pattern here. And then stick around for the end of the video because I'm going to reveal what these are actually used for in movie making. When we're in the edit, I'll explain exactly what the clap is used for. I want to use this piece of mahogany and this piece of beech for this clapperboard because I think they'll give a good contrast for the chevrons. This piece is fine as it is, 20 mil thick, but I want to cut some blanks out of this block of beech. So I'm just going to set the table saw up to a few millimetres wider than 20 mil, and then that will enable me to run the piece of beech through the thicknesser just to remove those saw kerf marks. There we go, that's given us a blank for the beach and that's just a little bit thicker so I can run that a couple of times through the thicknesser just to bring it down to the 20mm of the mahogany. You can see now that my piece of beach and my piece of mahogany are exactly the same thickness. I run them both through the planer so that's got them to the same size. Now I want to run some strips out of these, the same width, and then we can start gluing up. kind of see what I'm getting at now so now when we glue these pieces together and then I cut them at a 45 degree angle and that's going to give me that nice chevron pattern so I just need to cut strips out of these so that we've got more to glue together to give us that width of the board so we'll do that on the mitre saw okay I'm here at the mitre saw I've got a temporary stop block clamped to the saw exactly six inches or 150 mil from the left hand side of the blade i'm just going to cut all these pieces to length I've got my blocks of wood cut here and I'm going to show you how I'm going to glue these up without any clamps. So obviously we're going to alternate these to give me that black and white effect. And then what we want to do is we want to clamp these at a 45 degree angle. Something like that. So I'm going to use this scrap of wood. You might recognise that from another build. And I'll show you how I'm going to achieve this. So, screw a block in here. I can put a 45 degree angle on this, just to 
just to give me a starting point. And this is the first sort of block. I'm just going to pass that. Now we can simply load the pieces in here. Obviously, these will all get glued, but I'm just going to dry assemble it so I can get the blocks set up for clamping. There we go. And then another block in here to keep them all lined up at the top. So that's going to keep them all aligned and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a very small wedge that I can drive in against another stop block. I'm probably going to go a little longer piece of wood actually to go across here and then what I'll do is I'll drive that wedge in and you can see the action of me driving that wedge in is going to squeeze all of those up and then I'll just give them a gentle tap as I drive that in, just to make them all nice and snug. I'm going to glue these pieces up and to stop them sticking to this wooden jig or clamp if you like, I'm just going to use a simple piece of cling film and you'll be surprised how well that works. Make sure every piece is covered and that way you'll get a really good joint and then when we come to saw it and plane it later there's no way it's going to fall to pieces carry on like this all the way to the end of the jig and then we can drive that wedge in to apply some pressure That's all the blocks in the jig. Just remains now to just drive this wedge in and that's just gonna apply enough clamp pressure. Clean up a little bit of this glue, squeeze out, just make things a little bit easier. And just leave that in the jig now to just go off. Let all the glue set up overnight. We'll take that out and then we'll be able to cut it, run it through the planer, thickness it, and then slice it into pieces to create our chevron. Back in the workshop the next day, the glue's all set up. So now we're just gonna remove it from this jig. Knock me a little wedge out. And see how well that cling film's worked. None of that has stuck to the jig at all. Got a little bit of glue squeeze out on the bottom, which we'll clean off. And then we'll run this piece through the planer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut the strips out of this which will form the clapperboard. Initially I'm just going to knock off these points here just to get me a straight edge. Then we'll flip it over and then we'll start running some pieces off of it. Now we're going to start running some strips off of this. I've just put some tape on here just to protect this piece just maybe to minimise some chip out and just to protect it from running across the saw. I've also set the fence now 30 mil from this side of the blade. I'm going to run the piece through twice to give me two pieces exactly the same size. So as we take this protection off here, you'll see my idea come together. I think you know where I'm going with this now.
And now we'll just trim the ends square on the mitre saw. I've lowered the blade to about 12 mil or just under half an inch and I've set the distance from the fence to the side of the blade so that it will cut me a groove down the middle of this clapper board to accept the blackboard section. I'll run it through once, flip it round, run it through again and that will make sure that my groove is exactly centred on the width of this piece of wood. There we have our groove perfectly in the middle of that piece and just snug enough to get the board in. That's all the parts of our clapper board finished. We're just going to give them a very light sanding and then it'll be ready for some finish. The trick to any kind of spraying is to use thin even coats and to keep the uh, same distance away from your workpiece at all times. Travel across it from one side to the other in a smooth motion and then don't spray in one spot for any length of time and don't try to put too much on to start with. Just build it up gradually in small layers and you'll get a much better finish. That's it, that's enough. Let that dry and then come back and do another layer and just do it in small layers and you won't get any drips or runs. You'll end up with a nice smooth finish. On the clapper part of this clapper board, I'm just gonna apply a few light coats of a Danish oil. This will really bring out the difference in the two woods. Leave that to soak in and then we'll give that a light buff in with a soft cloth that'll be really lovely now we're just going to apply a second light coat to the blackboard it's time to just add the finishing touches to this clapper board we've put danish oil on the clapper part of the board that's brought that wood up lovely. I've given two or three coats of the matte black to the blackboard section. These will get glued together but what I want to work on now is the hinge portion. I've been to my little local hardware shop and I've brought these repair plates that you'd normally use to repair a keyhole and this is what I'm going to use for the hinges. Basically what I want to do is I want to put two bolts through the main part of the clapper and just one bolt through the top and then this sectional hinge around that single bolt but what I want to do is rather than have these rectangular like this I'm actually going to cut these into a, you know into some sort of shape so I've got the one bolt hole at the top and the two bolt holes at the bottom so I'm actually going to cut these like that with a hacksaw file them any rough edges and then come back and drill some holes. There we go. And then I'll just come in and just file that nice and smooth.
what we need to do now is I've just got to round off a little bit of that wood so that will allow that to open. Now we've just got to assemble the clap apart. Drop these screws in. I've got these dome head nuts so I'm going to put on this side just to finish these bolts off a little bit neater. And what I might do is put a little bit of Loctite in that top one. I don't want to nip that one right up because it will be difficult to open the clapper. But you can now see. So now all I've got to do is glue that to the blackboard. I put some tape on here just to protect that piece from any glue squeeze out. In a lot of my previous videos I've just relied on the microphone that's on the camera to record the audio but when the camera's far away from you the audio quality isn't that great. So you'll notice I've got this tiny little lavalier mic pinned to my t-shirt here and this is recording into my iPhone a separate audio track and then what we're doing the edit with the clapperboard is we can sync the audio from this microphone to the audio on the camera and I'll show you how to do that. We're in my editing software and what I've done is I've pulled in the intro video clip with its own audio track on this top line. I've also imported the audio file taken with the lavalier mic on the iPhone which is this track here. First thing I do is mute the audio on the video track so I can't hear that but I can still see the signature here. If we play this back now, we'll see the video from the camera and we'll see the separate audio track. YouTube clapperboard video, scene one, take one. Hello. You can see from watching the video here that it's completely out of sync with the separate audio track. But what you will notice on both tracks is there's a spike here and a corresponding spike here and this is when the clapperboard sounds. Let me just rewind that just slightly and you watch this play past that spike. There we go. So that was the actual clapperboard sound and there's a corresponding spike on the, on the video there. So all we have to do to sync these two together is to make sure that these two spikes line up with each other. I've got a timestamp here at 6.09 so I just need to drag this audio along until the spikes are directly underneath each other like that. And Now when we play it back the video will be in sync with the audio. YouTube clapperboard video scene one take one. Hello. And there we go. That's how the clapper board is used. It's purely just to sync separate audio tracks to video tracks. It also is a, a reference for the editor to know what scene uh, and what take it is just so he can put the clips in order. But primarily it's for syncing audio. This clapper board is really going to come in handy when we're working in the workshop or if I'm doing some shoots outside. Hope you found it interesting. Please make sure that you subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.